Hello friends, today we'll be talking about A Court of Broken Knives by Anna Smith Spark. So before we get into the review, I always like to mention that I'm really weird about spoilers. I like to go into books not knowing a whole lot, if anything, so I try to structure my, my reviews around that and I don't want to just give you a play-by-play -play of what happened. I'll try and give you my thoughts, my, the, kind of my takeaways from the book, and then you can decide if it's for you or not for you. The book I read right before A Court of Broken Knives was Leviathan Wakes. Those of you who have read that book can probably attest to the fact that it's a fast read. You can fly through it. It's really easy to read. You, you're you just going and going, and before you know it, you have 20 pages down, and you're just flying through. So I went from that mindset into A Court of Broken Knives, and I had to not only pump the brakes, but slam on the brakes, because... The writing style is a lot different. I mean, it is very dense and thick. Every word has a whole lot of weight to it. The prose is very poetic and descriptive. The way uh, the way that the environments are described is very uh, very poetic. Uh, the the combat is. <laughs> I love the combat in this book. I think it gives you a sense of what it's like to be in someone's perspective in that moment of complete chaos and confusion, and you put yourself in this position of. You know, you're someone fighting for your life. You're in this battle. All this, all these things are happening around you, and you almost get tunnel vision, and you focus on certain small things because you, your, you know, your mind would go to that little tunnel, and it just becomes this. You feel really uneasy. You can feel the chaos, and it, it's struck the, then the pace, and the writing around combat scenes, is very fast and very, it, it like flies at you. And you get this really uneasy feeling like you're not safe is the way you feel. The author that it reminded me of, combat scenes especially, is Adrian Selby. Adrian Selby does a great job at conveying that chaotic, uneasy feeling during combat scenes. I felt the same way in this one. The combat, the action is all very visceral. And it puts you in that position of this. Uh, everything is just going crazy around you. And you're just trying to stay alive. And the... <laughs> the writing style, I had to slow way down because this is the kind of book that if you miss a sentence or a paragraph, you're going to feel like you missed out a lot because everything is packed. And the blurb on the back of the book, one of the, blurb, one of the blurbs is, Anna Smith Spark writes in a unique voice with such pace and ferocity, your imagination has to struggle to keep up with your eyes. That's exactly how I felt reading this one is I had to slow way down so I can process what what is actually happening on the page and that's not in a bad way it kind of reminded me of reading someone like r scott baker or stephen erickson it's just a different approach it's, it's a different mindset going in and your kind of your approach to getting through the text one of the things i can see people you know kind of struggling to kind of get into a rhythm with this writing style is that the the points of view change from first person to third person Dominant, so it, it does switch, and it switches sometimes, kind of fast. So some, you're at one moment you're looking through someone's eyes, and the next minute you're looking in third person. So I, I can see some people trying to kind of struggling to get used to that, kind of get into a groove. It takes a little while to get into like a, like a, a like a rhythm with with this one. It takes a little bit to adjust to the writing style, and the writing style is like I said, very poetic, and the way that just the environments are described. There's a lot of uh, lines in this book you just want to put a tab next to and save to go back and read later. It's that kind of that kind of book that you're going to have some very memorable lines. Now, speaking of perspectives, we do have a few characters that we follow, and all the none of the characters, and I won't say more, they're all morally gray, but all the characters uh, are, are none of them are completely likable. And none of them are completely unlike. Well, some of them are completely unlikable, but they all come from different different places. So you get their, you start to learn about their backstories, their family histories, why they're in this pos position that they are, and you start to understand them. So you can go from feeling bad for a character in one minute, and the next minute you fear them because they can be very unpredictable. You don't know what they're going to do, how they're going to react, and it is you, you kind of feel like. Not only the characters are teetering on one way or another, they can teeter either way. They can do something really either really good or they can teeter the other way and do something really bad. You get that feeling from these characters that 
you get this uneasy feeling. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how they're going to react. Uh, one of the characters specifically, I won't say who, is very, very unpredictable. You do not know how this person will react, if they'll go on a, a killing spree or if they'll embrace this other person. You don't know what they're going to do at all. Not only are the characters teetering, but the world and the structure of the world is teetering too. You get the the feeling like everything is is teetering and something big is going to happen that the, the world is teetering back and forth and you know that it's going to tip and you know that something major is going to happen to shake everything up and you start to wonder about how you know <laughs> this is something also that I've just I've talked about recently with some other books that I've read but the political and the the structure the 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 mechanisms for control that are in this world remind me of a couple other books that I've read lately, just like Obsidian Awakening, specifically in this book, how they use religion to control people, how religion is used as a mechanism of control and of obedience. <laughs> in this one, there's some, some traditions and some beliefs that are absolutely terrible, but over time, it, they were done more often. And over time, what used to be necessary to happen very often became not as necessary to happen as often. It's still necessary, but let's not do this as often because the people started to frown upon it. It started to become unpopular. So what used to be necessary for the religion suddenly becomes not so necessary when it's not popular. So you can see how, how these mechanisms can evolve and they can change, but still maintain control, still maintain this, you know, this superiority, this, this way of keeping everyone where you want them to be from the people that are in power. Speaking of the people in power, the political maneuvering is, uh, <laughs> it gets pretty tangled. You don't really know who is, who's on what side. There's some, a lot of maneuvering going on and that comes, uh, that does play out in this book and it not what, I, it, what, what, what I was expecting to happen did not happen. And there was a lot of surprises with all of those, all that maneuvering and how it played out. I thought that was very, uh, very interesting. And it didn't play out, you know, sometimes in these fantasy books, I can get lost in the different characters, the different factions, the different people maneuvering. You start to lose track of who is trying to, you know, get some leverage on who. I never really felt confused with this one. I never felt like I didn't know who was who. Like I, I kind of had an idea of where everyone's positions were. I didn't always know their motivations, but I didn't lose track of the characters. I kind of felt like I had a firm grasp on all the characters and the world because it does take some time to lay out the world and some of the completely awful things that are done. Uh, sp speaking of completely awful, there are some pretty rough scenes in this one. And when I say this is a dark fantasy grimdark book, uh, it is. And Anna Smith Spark is the queen of, queen of Grimdark uh, on Twitter. There's a funny story behind that the title, but uh, it is well earned because this book is dark, gritty. It is, uh, I don't, I wouldn't say necessarily bleak, but it is dark. It is violent. Uh, there is some, there's some tough scenes, but uh, it does not, it does not hold back. So it is not on the far end, but it's, it's towards, you know, it's not on the, it's not the Prince of Nothing, but it is, it may be kind of close. So it, it is, uh, there are some tough scenes. So if you are someone who needs a character to latch onto, someone likable, someone to root for, you may struggle to find someone in this one who you can latch onto, who you can root for. There is one character I can think of that you may, that you may be able to kind of wrap your arms around and root for, but everyone does terrible things. Everyone's done bad things in this world. So it, it's tough. Also, we learn a lot about the family histories of the people that we follow, how their family history plays into the world, how their family history plays into what's happening now. And again, there are some things that I did not expect to happen, some surprises. Uh, so we do learn a lot about the characters, about the past, about uh, kind of what led us to this point. And that's something that I enjoyed reading about and again, I never felt too confused or that I couldn't, you know, keep up with what was going on. So I'm going to get into some very, very slight spoilers. So I will say if you like to go into books 
not knowing anything, go ahead and stop here. And uh, so thank you for watching, but very, very slight. It won't give away a whole lot, but I did wonder about prolonged, prolonged times of peace in our own history, because, uh, you know, you start to wonder, do prolonged periods of peace, even if though, even if there are some mechanisms that are terrible and savage and uh, barbaric to keep that peace for the most, most part, people who are, or have this long period of peace, do we as humans become uncomfortable? Do we crave conflict? Do we crave change? Uh, do we crave power so much that we're willing to throw a wrench in the system that is working? I mean, put the religious stuff aside and the, the terrible things that happen there, but from war and from famine and from everything else, do we get into this place where we want to create conflict that we're willing to create conflict we're willing to you know throw everything off balance f to gain power ourselves and i wonder how much of that has happened in history how much how much of that is you start you start to become complacent and you start to be in this long period of peace and you feel like you want to throw a monkey wrench in it just to i guess watch the world burn also this will be another slight spoiler it is on the back of the book so it's not a huge spoiler but uh, if you'd like to, like I said, if you'd like to go into books blind, then avoid this. But I did love the dragons in this book and the part that they played in the story and how they connected to the different characters. So I did, I did really like the dragons. They seem, again, unpredictable, ferocious, uh, dangerous. And you did get that sense of feeling that it, when they're around, that they can cause a lot of havoc. They can cause a lot of destruction they can do a lot of harm. So you do get that another, it's another element to the story. Not only the characters are unpredictable and dangerous and you start to wonder what their motivations are. The dragons are a whole nother character in themselves is that they can be almost the worst if they want to be, if they aren't controlled. That's all I'll say about the dragons. I did really enjoy them. I won't give any other, other details, but so that's all I'll say. Just, those are just minor, minor spoilers. For those fans in the series, we are having a spoiler-filled trilogy discussion with Anna Smith Spark on September 10th, 2022. So tune in for that if you're a fan of the series and want to hear more about the ins and outs of what happened in the, in the trilogy from Anna Smith Spark. Uh, have you read this book? If you have, let me know down below how you would rate it. As always, I want to thank you for watching. I appreciate your time, and I will talk to you soon.